Coming in at number 5 we have the Tallman family's bunk beds. So the item itself doesn't sound very scary because it's just a bunk bed, but it was the source of intense terror and trauma for the Tallman family. In 1987, Ali and Debbie Tallman bought a bunk bed from a secondhand store and brought it to their home in Horican, Wisconsin. They stored the bed in the basement until one day they decided to move it upstairs. From the moment someone slept in the bed, an evil entity was unleashed into their home and all hell broke loose. Their children, who were usually healthy, began falling sick for no apparent apparent reason. The radio in the bedroom with the haunted bunk bed would turn on. The kids reported seeing a menacing old woman with long black hair and a fiery glow. Doors slammed open and they heard disembodied voices from empty rooms. Strange paranormal occurrences were running rampant. As the haunting intensified, the Tormans enlisted their pastor for help with the dire situation. The pastor said that he felt the presence of evil and blessed their home. This was to no avail, and the Tormans unfortunately continued to be tormented. In a fit of frustration, Alan shouted at the entity to pick on him and not his children. Challenge accepted because shortly after, he witnessed the orange glow of fire inside his garage with red eyes staring at him through the window. Then one night, while sleeping in the kids' room to protect them, a fog manifested out of the floor. It morphed into flames with green eyes and a voice spoke out of it telling him, you're dead. Enough was enough and the Tormans fled their home. The bunk bed was then buried in a landfill so no one would have to go through what the Tormans family did. The house still stands today and reports of paranormal activity seized once the bunk bed was removed. Coming in at number 4, the Bassano vase. Most people wouldn't mind being gifted a vase from Italy, especially one cast from silver in the 15th century, but the Bassano vase is said to be extremely haunted and cursed. The vase was apparently gifted to an Italian bride on her wedding night who lived in a small village close to Napoli. Her big day was ruined, however, when she was found dying on the floor with the vase in her hand, swearing to get revenge. The vase was then passed down to people in her family. With each new owner came another mysterious death, so the family locked it away. In 1988, the Bassano vase was found with a note inside that read, Beware, this vase brings death. Ignoring the warning, the vase was then sold at an auction. Three months later, the new owner was dead. The owner after that died two months later. After a string of mysterious deaths, the police decided to bury the vase somewhere no one would find it. It's said to still be hidden away even today. Whether the vase was cursed or it's the angry spirit of the bride, that's up for debate. All I know is that I'm glad this haunted relic is no longer in circulation. Coming in at number 3, Robert the Doll. Residing behind a glass barrier in a Florida museum is Robert the Doll. This little guy is one of the most haunted dolls in the world and I think we can all agree that he's absolutely terrifying. While his little sailor outfit is cute, his worn and torn face is something only a mother could love. He's so haunted that he's said to cause car accidents, broken bones, divorces and a plethora of other misfortunes. If you dare disrespect the doll by taking its picture without permission, he will curse you. This is why his exhibit is littered with letters from people begging for forgiveness. But before the century old doll was combined to a life behind a protective barrier, he belonged to Robert Eugene Otto who went by the name Jean. Jean's grandfather bought him the doll in Germany and the pair were inseparable. Strange things started happening. Jean began having full blown conversations with the doll. Many nights the family would be woken up by his screams, only to find a frightened Jean surrounded by overturned furniture and scattered toys. He insisted that Robert did it. Things would move around the house and stuff would break. Again, Jean insisted that Robert did it. His parents were skeptical but also unnerved by the strange events going on in the house. Even people who passed by the Otto house in Key West, Florida claimed to see the doll peering out the window at them. Although Robert the doll is now locked away in a museum, his apparent ability to curse people is still strong as ever. Those brave enough to visit him are urged to be careful or else they might find themselves cursed by the haunted doll. Coming in at number 2 we have Dibbuck Box. Known as the the most haunted object in the world, this vintage wine cabinet is locked in a glass box at Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum. In fact, you have to be over 18 and sign a waiver just to set eyes on it. In Jewish folklore, a dibbuk is a malicious spirit with the ability to possess living people and use them for evil. These spirits can be trapped inside of a box to prevent this, which is why the dibbuk box is supposedly home to an evil entity. The dibbuk box was listed on eBay several years ago and it became a sensation. The seller Kevin Manis claimed to have purchased it from the estate of a woman who survived a World War II concentration camp. The woman's granddaughter, who was absolutely terrified of the box, warned him that her grandmother said it held the spirit of a dibbuk. Following 
Following his purchase, Kevin experienced a series of terrifying unexplained events. He would have nightmares of an old hag who would brutally attack him and then wake up covered in bruises. His mother also apparently suffered a stroke after opening the Dybbuk box. He decided to get rid of it for obvious reasons and it eventually ended up in the hands of Zach Bagans for his museum. Museum goers can look at the Dybbuk box but can't touch it and for good reasons. Post Malone did a private tour of the museum with Zach and found himself cursed by the evil spirit. Zach removed the protective glass around the haunted wine cabinet and decided to place his hands directly on it. Post Malone then touched Zach's shoulder and that's all it took. In less than a month his private jet was forced to make an emergency landing, his house was broken into by armed robbers and then he got into a car accident. Safe to say that is one haunted relic that should stay locked away forever. And finally in at number 1 we have Annabelle. In the number one spot is a doll so haunted, so notorious and so creepy that she's had three horror movies made about her. The real Annabelle isn't actually a wide eyed porcelain doll but an innocent looking raggedy Anne who lives at Ed and Lorraine Warren's occult museum. But don't be fooled by her unassuming look, she's considered extremely haunted and dangerous. So haunted in fact that she permanently resides in a wooden box with a copy of the Lord's Prayer and a label reading, warning, positively do not open. In true Hollywood fashion Annabelle's origin story was altered quite a bit. It. The real story of Annabelle started with two nurses who lived together as roommates in the 70s, when one was gifted the doll by her mother. Soon after, the girls began noticing that Annabelle would move on her own, finding her sitting in a different position and even in different rooms. The haunting escalated when they found parchment paper with the words help me written in crayon scattered around their place. The girls didn't even own parchment paper. After more unexplained events, they decided to contact a medium who told them that the spirit of a 6 or 7 year old girl named Annabelle died in the area around their apartment complex and was living inside of the doll. Things only got worse and Annabelle became violent with Lou, a boyfriend of one of the nurses. He claimed to have been strangled by the doll while sleeping and even suffered seven claw like slashes on his body after throwing her across the room on a separate occasion. Annabelle is known to be violent with people who dare to taunt her. Ed Warren believes that the doll is responsible for at least one death, that of a museum goer. According to the late paranormal investigator, a young man and his girlfriend visited the occult museum. Stupidly, the man decided to mock Annabelle by tapping on the glass and telling her to scratch him like he scratched Lou. The couple was kicked out and the man died approximately three hours later when he lost control of his motorcycle and hit a tree. Although the raggedy Ann doll is locked away behind a wooden box, complete with the Lord's Prayer, it seems that Annabelle's evil prowess simply cannot be contained. In at number 5 we have the Hope Diamond. Encrusted in this 45 carat dark greyish blue diamond is said to be an extremely deadly curse. It's absolutely beautiful and the name inspires warm fuzzy feelings but its checkered past makes you question why it's called the Hope Diamond at all. The brilliant cushion cut stone is surrounded by a pendant comprising 16 white diamonds and a chain with 45. It's fit for a king probably because it used to belong to one. But before King Louis XIV of France got his royal hands on it, it apparently came from a mine in India. For many years there was speculation that the incredible diamond was stolen from the eye of a Hindu statue. Indiana Jones style. It was said that the man who stole it was torn to pieces by dogs. There's no solid evidence of this, but the story of a deadly curse that plagued the diamond's owner certainly stuck. Over the years it was stolen, sold, recut and did a lot of owner hopping. One thing apparently kept happening however, people associated with the Hope Diamond would die. King Louis died of gangrene and all of his legitimate children but one died in childhood. Marie Antoinette allegedly wore it and we all know what happened to her. A man named Wilhelm Falls recut it in the 1800s and his son ended up murdering him. More owner hopping and more death occurred until American jeweler Harry Winston purchased it and donated the diamond probably out of the kindness of his heart, or partly because it was haunted. Is the diamond actually haunted and cursed by the Hindu idol it was stolen from? Who knows? Today, the Hope Diamond and its lavish setting, worth over $350 million, by the way, is locked up at the Smithsonian behind bulletproof glass. Thanks to its casing, the curse seems to have died down, for now, anyway. In at four, we have the Rain Woman. I don't know why anyone would want to own this piece of art strictly because of how creepy it is. Seriously, it's so uncomfortable to look at. The Rain Woman was painted by Ukrainian artist Svetlana Teletz, and how this painting came about is unnerving to say the least. The artist apparently always felt like something or someone was always with her, just silently watching over her. One day, sitting in front of a blank canvas, Svetlana had the sudden urge to draw a woman, as if someone was guiding her hand. She 
She said that the contours of her face, the shades, the colors, everything, she could see every little detail. The haunted painting was then put on the market and sold, but kept being returned by the different buyers. The first lady to purchase the Rain Woman promptly returned it, stating that she felt like there was someone else in her apartment with her. Buyer number two followed suit, complaining of a shadow woman at night, tormenting him and driving him to the edge of madness. The third buyer, a self-proclaimed skeptic, also returned it after seeing a lady with white eyes everywhere. Haunted or not, this painting is certainly creepy and not something I'd want hanging in my house. In at number three, we have Thomas Busby's stoop chair. Okay, so technically this haunted item isn't locked away per se, but simply hung up high in a museum in the UK to avoid any more deaths. Don't worry, I'll explain. The death chair is said to be plagued by a 300 year old curse bestowed upon it by murderer Thomas Busby. In 1702, Busby brutally murdered his father in law for apparently sitting in his favourite chair without permission. He was convicted and sentenced to death, but before his final moments, he was granted a last wish. Of course, he chose to have a drink in his favourite chair. According to local legend, he said minutes before his execution, death shall come swiftly to anyone that dares to sit in my chair. Death came to him as he was promptly happy. Hanged, but it also came to those he wished it upon. For years, people who dared to sit in Busby's death chair would meet a grim fate. A chimney sweeper, numerous World War II soldiers, and a man staying at the Busby Stoop Inn are all among the victims of this century's old hex, but trust me, there are more. Tired of accidents being linked to Thomas Busby's oak chair, it was donated to a museum where it still is today. Rather than locking away the historic relic altogether, they decided to hang it high on the wall so that no one would ever suffer from it again. Coming in at number two, we have the woman from Lem Statue. Dubbed the goddess of death, the woman from Lem Statue is said to be a depiction of a fertility goddess. So how did it go from a goddess said to bring life to one that takes it away? Well, you can thank another deadly curse for that. This ancient haunted relic was unearthed in 1878 in Lem, Cyprus, but its origins are much older than that, dating back to around 3500 BCE. The statue was carved from pure limestone, which has an interesting time to the supernatural. Experts in the paranormal community believe that limestone is deeply connected to paranormal activity. The story of the alleged curse on this statue comes from the four families who previously owned it, all of which met an untimely fate. After the first man acquired the statue, all seven members of his family died within six years. The second man had a similar experience, with his entire family dying within four years. This unfortunate pattern continued, and then the third family to own it died within four years as well. The woman from the Lem disappeared for a while until the fourth and final family suffered at the hands of it. Sir Alan Biverbrook, alongside his wife and two daughters, passed away. His two surviving sons donated the statue to the Royal Scottish Museum. The woman from the Lem remains today behind protective glass at that very museum. And finally, in at number one, we have the Anguished Man. Is anyone really surprised that this piece of art is haunted? The Anguished Man, an oil painting created by an unknown artist, is rivaled by the likes of Annabelle and the Dibbuk Box for the most haunted item in the world. Story goes that the artist who created the horrifying piece actually mixed his own blood into the paint. Shortly after finishing the painting, he took his own life. The current owner, Sean Robinson, says that his grandma gave it to him with the warning that it is extremely dangerous. Ripe with paranormal activity, the painting is believed to be the source of a string of traumatic experiences for Sean and his family when they had it stored in their home. Sean would wake up to see a faceless figure standing in his bedroom, and his wife once woke up to something lying in bed with her, but the final straw was when their son was violently pushed down the stairs. Sean began posting videos of their paranormal activity online and garnered tons of attention. Rumours that this haunted painting was up for sale circulated the internet a few years back. Thankfully, this couldn't be further from the truth, as the anguished man is still securely locked away to protect the world from its horrors. Coming in at number 5, we have Demon House Staircase. The Demon House in Gary, Indiana was the centre of a docudrama in 2018. Zach Bagan tells the story of a family struggling with the hauntings and even possessions that happened in the home. It is claimed that the house contains around 200 spirits. The Gary Police Department investigated on numerous occasions and priests even performed numerous exorcisms. When the family first moved into the home despite cold December temperatures, large black flies swarmed their screened-in porch and they kept coming back even when the family killed them and 
killed them. After that, they started to hear footsteps around the house going up and down from the basement. They claimed things got worse from there when the demons attached to the children. They said that the kids eyes bulged, their voice deepened and they sported evil smiles while possessed. One of the family members described what it felt like to be killed and walked up the wall in the presence of her family case manager and hospital nurse. Once Zach investigated the goings on in the house, it was decided it would be best to bulldoze the home. However, he did keep pieces of the home such as the staircase to store away in his museum. In at number 4 we have Peggy the doll. It is said that even just looking at a picture of Peggy can cause hauntings, from your computer freezing to the room going cold and light bulbs blowing out whenever you mention the doll. The first known owner of the doll started having dreams haunted by the doll. She would wake up feeling hot and shaken. No matter where she moved the doll, the dreams persisted. She called in the help of two local priests, but after two visits the dreams still persisted. After suffering a fever and hallucinations, she sought help from the haunted doll museum. Their team then set out to get to the bottom of these hauntings. They came to the conclusion that the woman had been possessed by the spirit of a woman born in 1946 in London, who died of a chest condition, possibly asthma. They had psychic mediums study the doll and they all concluded Peggy was restless, frustrated and previously persecuted, possibly with ties to the holocaust. Peggy was on display for some time at the haunted doll museum and there were further reports of her coming to people in their dreams. She was since purchased by the Zach Bagans haunted museum in Vegas, where she is currently locked away in a display. Coming in at number 3, The Mummy's Curse. Technically The Mummy's Curse is not on the actual mummy, but on the lid that once held her. It is unknown who was once held within it, but it was a woman of a high status from the 21st or 22nd dynasty, 950 to 900 BC. The curse has a few stories attached to it, and some even think that she caused the disaster of the Titanic. This mysterious mummy was found at Thebes in the late 1800s. It was brought in by four young English men who all had untimely deaths. Two of the men died in shooting accidents and the other two died of poverty. A string of illnesses, accidents and deaths followed by anyone who came into contact with the mummy. The most shocking claim is that some survivors of the Titanic blame the mummy for the sinking. Among the passengers of the Titanic was journalist William Thomas Stead, who had published a few articles about the curse. The survivors recall Stead discussing the artifact and its curse over dinner. It is claimed he had purchased a ticket for himself to transport the artifact to New York. As the stories were told, its reputation grew and many believed its presence on board caused the disaster. It is believed that in the chaos someone bribed one of the guards to sneak the artifact onto a lifeboat to save the historic piece. Not long after arriving, the unlucky mummy was soon causing mayhem and misery at the home of its American owner, so he decided to send her back to Britain. Luckily it is now safely locked away on display at the British Museum in London. However, visitors do still report unsettling sensations when viewing the unlucky mummy's coffin lid. In at number 2 we have James Dean's Porsche. You don't hear of many haunted cars, but James Dean's Porsche has taken enough lives to be taken very seriously. As soon as James got his car, some people had a bad feeling around it. So Alec Guinness met with James for lunch and he showed him the car. Alec commented, I quote, If you get in that car, you'll be found dead in it by this time next week. And within the week, he was. This was just the start of the car's curse. When a mechanic attempted to repair the car, it fell and crushed his legs. The car's new owner decided to sell the engine and drivetrain to two racers. One of the racers lost control of his car, hit a tree and died instantly. The other was injured when his car locked up and rolled over. Two thieves tried to take pieces of the car but they were both injured during the robbery. The car was then donated to the safety exhibit of the California Highway Patrol. The exhibit caught fire and the car had to be moved to a different exhibit. At the second exhibit the car fell onto a student breaking his hip. This meant that it was moved once again. It even managed to crush and kill a truck driver who was transporting it. It was since stolen and there has been reports that the new owner is keeping the car hidden away, hopefully to stop any further damage. And finally in at number 1 we have the devil's rocking chair. The origin and creation of the rocking chair is unknown but it was passed to the Glatzel family in the early 1950s. It lay dormant in the house just like any piece of furniture until the summer of 1980 when it became the centre of the family's tragedy. It all started when David Glatzel woke up one night screaming. He told his family that he was visited by a man with big black eyes, a thin face with animal features, jagged teeth, pointed ears his horns and hoofs. Everyone who knew David knew he was not the type of person to make up this kind of thing and he was clearly shaken by it. After this it was believed that David was possessed. He became withdrawn and appeared to be depressed. His sister Debbie asked her fiance Arne Johnson to stay with David to make sure he was being watched over in case anything was to get worse. David continued to have nightmares saying that the man promised to take his soul. He would often be covered in bruises and scratches he couldn't explain and worst of all he started to see the figure while he was awake or was sat in the rocking chair. 
Family members would see the chair rocking, but only David could see the beast in the chair. Desperate for help, they brought in Ed and Lorraine Warren. They started to perform exorcisms regularly to help David, many with him seated in a rocking chair. The chair itself moved about the house on its own, mysteriously disappearing and reappearing in different places. Most incredibly, it levitated on numerous occasions in full view of witnesses, including the Warrens and shocked family members. It happened once while David was sitting in it during an exorcism. After the final exorcism, the devil did leave David, however, as it left him, it transferred into his sister's fiance, Arne. He began slipping into trances for a period of months before killing his landlord, Alan Bono, with a five inch pocket knife, stabbing the man as Debbie watched. He tried to plead demonic possession in court, but the judge was not convinced. The family surprisingly held onto the chair for a number of years in storage, and when they moved, it came with them. They started to notice that when friends or family members sat in the chair, they would have strange things happen to them. One family member was unable to walk for 10 years after sitting in the chair. Today, the Devil's Rocking Chair is at the Haunted Museum. It was originally safely on display, but it began to cause issues with guests and people who work for the museum. They decided for the safety of everyone, it needed to be locked away in storage, where it could not hurt anyone else. 